Um, I remember just listening to my mom talking about my dad, about his high school days and how he was, how he played football and I was like, I want to be like my dad, I want to play football. His freshman year in high school, um, he was um, going out for football and the first big major summer practice, you know, it's his year to show who he is and be tough and go hard and try and really impress the coaches. And he went to hit somebody and he put his head down and hit head first. Um, I, I guess he kind of blacked out and he didn't realize what had happened, but he didn't remember hitting anybody. He didn't remember blacking out. He didn't know, he just knew that he didn't feel good. Well, I actually met John uh, quite a while ago, actually, during a previous football season and was treating him for concussion related to football injury. And he had a lengthy recovery because of the nature of his injury. And it was very hard on him because he's an athlete. He's committed. He's dedicated both to his school and to the sport. And it was a struggle to stay off the field and get well. You know, as a coach, you, you're pushing your son not as a father, but as a coach, you, you're trying to push your, your your boys to do the best they can. Well, we were at practice one day, and Tom came over and said I, he didn't feel good. And in my my mind, I said, well, just you know, take it easy for a minute and go drink, hydrate, go drink some water, and, and then come back. The, the trainer several times before that came over and said, he, you know, he's got a concussion. And I said, nah. I, I didn't believe him. I didn't believe her. He, he thought he was just being a silly kid that didn't want to practice a day here and there and so he was saying he didn't feel good. Um, and so it was really hard to convince him to go and see Dr. Russo. With John, one of the big things that what we saw was he definitely was having difficulties with his balance, but he was demonstrating signs of nystagmus in his visual processing. While doing a task where, he, you know, Cheryl's fingers were here and John's job is to bounce his eyes from back and forth and back and forth and you should see a relatively smooth tracking back and forth. Sometimes you can see a little hesitancy in people because of pain and things like that. Uh, John immediately demonstrated signs of nystagmus. And at that point it finally hit me. It's like how I was such a, a terrible father. Here I am pushing my son after, you know, people getting arrested for DUIs and here he is walking around being, you know, to me drunk, basically. Um, and he said, you were right, she started doing some testing and he couldn't pass any of these tests that she was giving him and he's a police officer. Um, and so I think it helped him to understand she was doing things that looked to him like sobriety tests because they were similar balance things, finger to the nose kind of things. Um, and he was doing terribly at them. And I think that was the point where he had kind of some other life experience that made him realize, hey, my, my healthy 15 year old, 16 year old son can't pass these sobriety tests, there must actually be something going on. Um, and so it kind of clicked for him and from there on out he was really on board with what we were all trying to do for John. With the neuro exam also being that way, it definitively answered the question of was he symptomatic? Absolutely. Could he be on the field playing safely? No. There was no question. We absolutely adore Dr. Russo. We think she's the most amazing person in the world. But at that point, you're thinking, you're crazy. This can't. No way. It, it's not really happening. And we all just sat there and cried. And I looked at her, and you could tell she was trying not to cry. I can't imagine that's an easy thing to tell somebody. It's difficult for me to say to someone, I'm sorry, I know you love this sport, but you can't risk playing this anymore, which is what I've eventually had to say to John based on the results of neuropsychological testing. Um, when he was in a more recovered state, we did a full battery of tests, and unfortunately these tests do indicate that he's having significant cognitive difficulties that indicate to me and, and make it extremely unwise for him to engage in any high-risk activities where he's likely to suffer a contact injury. Well, you know, the lovely part with John is he does have this wonderful supportive family and especially when his parents could see what the difficulties were, they, they stood behind him. If you have a headache and you don't feel good, don't hide it from the trainers. 
because you think it's helping yourself and you think you're helping your team, but you're really not. You're just making it worse, obviously, because I got pulled out. <laughs>